your father did. If you were a woman, we know exactly what you did 300 years ago. No profession, zero. It's only capitalism that made it possible for women to actually work and to actually leave and pursue their own choices and their own values. Otherwise, you did what your father did. You joined the guild. Who decided who you married 300 years ago? You didn't. Your family did. All choices were done by some authority. Who decided what the right science was? Not scientists. Religious authorities. In every aspect of human life, authorities decided what happened 200 and something years ago was that authorities were shattered, individuals were freed to make choices for themselves, entrepreneurs created businesses, businesses employed people, standard of living rose, wages rose, productivity rose, and we all became wealthy. Because we tried a little bit of capitalism, not all the way, just a little bit. And the more we try it, the wealthier we get. Most of that happened in, in Western Europe, in the United States, in the 19th century, in the early 20th century. But Asia, over the last 40 years, has caught up. We see exactly the same pattern in Asia. You see that once you free up and liberate the individual and let them make choices for themselves, economic choices and life choices, but primarily economic choices, suddenly they become rich. So when we liberate India, when we liberate China, when we liberate South Korea, when we liberate Taiwan, suddenly they become rich because they use the same methodology we all became rich by. They tried capitalism, again, limited, not all the way. I wish they'd gone all the way. They would be even richer today if they had. But in every single case in human history, at least the history of the last 200 and something years, countries that have embraced capitalism have led to massive economic growth and individual human flourishing. The ability of individuals to live their lives, pursue their dreams, pursue their values. Countries that didn't do that remain poor, where people have limited opportunities, limited choices, and don't get to pursue their values. And those, I think, are systems that are immoral, systems that allow individuals to live, to flourish, to pursue choices, to pursue values. That's what it means to be a moral political system.